This is my most zoomed in video yet because I printed the spectrum really small. Uh, if you get a look at my hands, sorry they're so disgusting. I had poison ivy, but here we are. I downloaded a 1H NMR spectrum from the spectral database for organic, organic compounds online. It's a Japanese website. Um, and this is the NMR spectrum for some molecule and I'm not gonna tell you what the molecule is. You're gonna help me figure it out. Now, normally on an NMR spectrum, you can also get the integrated area of the peaks. This peak here corresponds to one hydrogen. This peak corresponds to one hydrogen. And these ones correspond to six total. So we have eight hydrogens in the molecule as a whole. Now, they're grouped into peaks based on the number of equivalent hydrogens. We have one hydrogen on its own here. We have one hydrogen on its own here. And here we have six hydrogens that are all equivalent to each other. Now, uh, a carbon can only hold four hydrogens total, and that's if it's methane. Um, methyl groups, that's uh, CH3 groups. Let me draw that here for you. CH3 groups have three equivalent hydrogens on them. So this could correspond to two of these, or it could correspond to three equivalent uh, CH2 groups, stuff like that. Anyways, there's six hydrogens and they all have to be the same, so there has to be symmetry in the molecule. Let's take a look at what we can guess is going on here. Here we have some, we have a peak that corresponds to one hydrogen and it is split into one, two, three, four, five other peaks. Is it just five? Let me zoom in a little more on here. See how we feel about that. Oh, that's as far as my camera will zoom. Let's, oh, look at that. There are tiny little ones here. See those tiny little peaks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is split into what's called a septet, which means that this hydrogen is adjacent or on a carbon that is adjacent to carbons that contain six other hydrogens. By being adjacent to six other hydrogens, you get split into seven peaks, which makes me wonder whether or not this one single hydrogen is near wherever these guys are. Here we have a singlet. There's only one peak here. And so this hydrogen is probably on its own somewhere in the molecule or buffered by oxygen somehow or some other electronegative atom. These hydrogens are uh, split into a doublet. There are two equivalently sized peaks here, which means they are all next to one chemically equivalent hydrogen. Now, take a look. We had one hydrogen splitting six times into a septet, and we had six hydrogens splitting once into a doublet. That makes me think that these six hydrogens are directly adjacent to this hydrogen, and this hydrogen is adjacent to these guys. We only have eight total, so I'm going to guess that we have two methyl groups there's a CH3, and there's a CH3, and they are both equivalent to, or sorry, a, yeah, they're all equivalent to each other right now, but I'm not done my molecule. This carbon is adjacent to both of them. If this carbon has a single hydrogen on it, he'll be split six times for those six equivalent hydrogens, and these six equivalent hydrogens will be split once because of him. Ah. I'm liking this structure so far. The only other thing we need is one hydrogen on its own. Now we can't have other hydrogens floating around here, so I don't particularly want to, uh, to include another carbon that needs other hydrogens connected to him. Based on this structure, I could just as easily predict an OH group here as I could predict a C with a double bonded O and a hydrogen. Both of those would result in a singlet. The difference is 
aldehyde H's tend to be way farther to the left in a spectrum. So I'm going to eliminate him. OH groups can be far to the left, but this guy's hardly far to the left at all. In fact, he is further to the right than even what we think this hydrogen corresponds to. So I'm going to guess that we have an OH group on him as well. Cool. Do you get why I've predicted this molecule for this spectrum? It's because we needed six hydrogens split once. These are six equivalent hydrogens split once for that one. This is one hydrogen split six times. That's the same thing, but in reverse. I have my one hydrogen here, and then six equivalent hydrogens on the carbons adjacent to him. And then I have a single H buffered by an oxygen, so he's not split at all. Cool? Well, it shouldn't surprise you that uh, I'm not going into this blind. I actually knew what the structure was gonna be before we did it. But uh, I wanted you guys to watch how I would turn a spectrum into a guess for a molecule. It is not always this easy. Very rarely do we take a whole NMR spectrum and try to guess the structure of the whole molecule. Often we're given other information like the mass spectrum or even the molecular formula for the molecule uh, or the molecular weight, or we have an idea what the molecule is going to look like before we go in. But uh, this is just NMR practice, and there you go. Best of luck.